Let's talk about our first Roto Mock Draft of the year next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5. As always, make sure to follow and stream us on Spotify. Today is Wednesday, January 26th. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Scott White. And these guys, Scott and Chris Towers, they did a 12-team Roto mock draft with the traditional 5x5 five five categories. You can find the link in the podcast description. But let's take a look at Scotty's team. And in his first five picks, four of those were hitters. Mike Trout, Freddie Freeman, Austin Riley, and Pete Alonzo. Scott, did you have a specific strategy when coming into the draft, uh, specifically when it comes to offense? When it comes to offense, I want a lot of home runs in five by five leagues. I want to make sure I'm mostly devoting my early round picks to that, and I think I did. I, you know, that's that's a category where if you don't end up with enough home runs, you could really be hurting in RBI and runs as well. Plus, the early round home run hitters generally give you a nice foundation and batting average. What I was intentionally not targeting was stolen bases. I'm kind of in in these roto leagues going with what I'll call the zero SB strategy, which doesn't mean I'm punting the category. I'm just acknowledging that it doesn't take much to middle, finish in the middle of the pack in the category. So you don't you don't want to um, inflate a player, particularly if it's like a 15 to 20 steel guy. You don't want to inflate his value based on that and end up costing you in the other categories. There, you will happen into a certain number of stolen bases without trying that hard for it. And uh, it, it very likely will put you in a position to finish in the middle of the pack. Um, and I think based on the way this draft turned out, it it uh, it, it kind of supported that theory. All right. So, yeah, you wound up with a lot of power, as we mentioned. How about the pitching? How did the pitching turn out? Let's specifically look at your starting pitchers. You took Sandy Alcantara at the end of round three. You took Charlie Morton uh, at the beginning of round six. Frankie Montas at the end of round seven. Framber Valdez at the uh, start of round 14. Adam Wainwright in round 15. And then Zach Greinke in round 22. What do you think about your, your pitching, Scott, the way that it turned out? Do you think it's adequate enough? Yeah, I think it is. I think... Yeah, you know, I'm higher than the consensus on Charlie Morton. I, I really don't understand the skepticism surrounding him. So I see him as like a round four pitcher that I got in round six. Uh, I have him and Sandy Alcantara on the same tier. I think Frankie Montas, I have them, I have him a tier lower, but uh, he showed that kind of upside over the final three months last year as well. Had a swinging strike rate on par with like Max Scherzer, uh, an ERA in the low twos for that uh, for that back stretch of the season. Um. So yeah, I, I I think there's enough high end types there. I, I I I like that I got innings eaters who will likely help in WHIP or ERA, if not both. In the case of Adam Wainwright, I mean, part of the struggle with strikeouts, you know, is just getting a pitcher who gives you enough innings to give you a a respectable total in that category. Forget the rate, the K per nine or whatever. And I think Adam Wainwright is well-suited for that. I think Framber Valdez is well-suited for that. Zach Granke could be as well. And I'm, I, I think maybe people are writing him off too quickly. Obviously, didn't invest much in him. In an ideal world, I would have gotten seven of my top 55 starting pitchers. I ended up with only six. Uh, but that's because I, 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 I liked the value of some of the lower-end closers, or at least projected closers, and ended up with three of those to fill only nine pitcher spots. Yeah, let's talk about those closers. For one, Scott, this is so weird. You didn't punt closer. I feel like, what's going on? Did someone take yeah. over Scott's body here? But you get Craig Kimbrell in round 13, Camilo Duvall in round 16, and Scott Barlow in round 21. Again, you, you didn't really invest much, and you wound up with a decent crop of relievers here. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. None of them ends up being a closer for long. I mean, Craig Kimbrell, obviously, we're, we're waiting for the White Sox to trade him to a team that can use him as a closer. But it, it sounds like that's the expectation before the start of the season. And if that's the case, then, you know, he's potentially a top five closer. He's still has great stuff. Uh, yeah, Duvall, uh, Barlow, they were their team's closers at the end of last season. Barlow for a nice long stretch. And, uh, you know, the the bottom line is I, I I don't feel like I paid up for them. There there is volatility with every uh, save source, 
but as long as you're not reaching for it, it's, it's, um, it's just, it's just the cost of doing business, Frank. Yeah. Uh, look, either way, you got to wind up with saves. Either you're, you draft some of them or you take some shots throughout the draft or you're going to be spending up fab or, or your waiver wire claims, no matter what. Yeah. I mean, you, you've got to wind up with some, you yeah. don't want zero, I, I but just, yeah. I just don't want to invest much of, I just don't want to invest much in them one way or another. I don't feel like I invested much in them. I, I invested some draft capital, but not much draft capital. And to get three projected closers, you know, I feel good about that. Yeah, no, I agree with you. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, and specifically on this draft, you can listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, your smart speakers, or anywhere else podcasts are found. And thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. We'll be back again tomorrow morning. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 